Hello and welcome to our five sessions of exercises based on the themes and characters in Lewis Carroll's book Alice in Wonderland. These will be mainly seated exercises, there will be some standing exercises too, but always with a seated alternative if you prefer to do those. So all you need is comfortable clothing and a bit of space to move around in and Rosa and Louisa will be leading the movement exercises in their homes. I'll be playing the piano and leading vocal and creative exercises from my home and we hope you enjoy it very much. Welcome back everybody. Let's just get a little bit warm before we start moving again today through our Alice in Wonderland exercises. So just before we um, start warming up, let's just check that our feet are in parallel position. Our knees are pointing forward, our toes are pointing forward and our hips are pointing forward. And just making sure there's a little bit of space between your back and the back of the chair so you're using your core muscles to sit up. And let's have a little bit of a rock, finding those sit bones, feeling nice and grounded, pressing through. Good. And pulling up through the spine, feeling as though we've got a string pulling us up to the ceiling. Good. And feeling roots growing down into the ground through our feet. Okay, let's just take a very quick warm up today before we get into the thick of it with Alice in Wonderland. So let's just begin by closing our eyes. And just take a few deep breaths here. So let's all breathe in together, breathing in. And exhale. And again, breathing in. And exhale out. Nice. And you can open your eyes here now. And we're going to keep that same breath as we lift our shoulders up. And as we exhale, pressing our shoulder blades down our back. And let's do that again, breathing in. And Pressing those shoulder blades down and again breathing in and pressing those down. Good. And now let's just find our shoulders with our hands here and we're going to start drawing circles with our elbows. So bringing your elbows up and circling round and again circling round. And here you can start getting some movement in your torso. So trying to press our tummy button back as our elbows come forwards and then lifting up through our chest. Good. As our elbows go back, let's do that again. And opening up through your chest. Nice. And one more time like this. Circling those elbows, drawing those circles. Nice. And let's release those arms down. And now let's take that circular motion with our extended arms. So lifting up and circling down, just moving our arms to begin with here, good, and again, lifting up and coming down, and now let's use our torso as our hands come forward, tummy button to the back of the chair, lifting up and looking up as your arms come down, again, forwards, reaching up, and last time, reaching forwards, and lifting up and here just finding the back of the chair if you can with your arms and really finding that stretch across your chest imagining you've got that sunshine sparkling down onto your chest here good and just release that nice and we're just going to press one leg out to the side and press the other leg and then we're going to twist and come back to center and twist the other way come back to center twist and center nice just gently twisting round bring one leg in place it down and the other leg in place it down now with your fingers and your toes I want you to scrunch all of them up really tightly and then release and let's scrunch fingers and toes and then release. One more time, scrunching, scrunching, scrunching and release. Nice. 
and let's take the side of the chair with one hand and just scoop up and over and up. Nice. Other side, reaching the hand with what reaching the chair with one hand and coming scooping up over and back. Let's do that once more each side and really feel as you scoop up, you're reaching, 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 you're reaching all the way over. Feeling that lovely side stretch and last time reaching, 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 reaching and coming back. Nice and let's just wake our legs up a little bit more. So clasping our hands under one leg, lifting it up, giving giving your leg a good shake, letting all the muscles go and release. Good. And the other side, lifting up, giving it a bit of a shake and release. Lovely. And let's just imagine that we've got sand on the ground around us and I want you to draw a line in the sand by pointing one foot forwards and then you're going to slightly open that out to one side, drawing a bit of an arc as it comes back, pressing that foot back down to the ground. Let's do that with the other foot, pressing it forwards, arc, arcing round, coming back and bring that foot in. And let's feel really tall, just reaching our hands up to the ceiling, looking up to the ceiling and let's press that air down. And finding our hands on our laps there, good. Hopefully you've started to feel the body moving a little bit and everything's starting to warm up. So we will leave that there and get on with the exercises. So this week we are going to begin with our Cheshire Cats exercise that we learnt last week. So let's have a little recap of the movements. So just check, double checking your feet are in that parallel position and you're sitting up lovely and tall. We begin with that big smile and our hands come down below our jaw and draw that smile out to the side. So we've got one big smile lifting up to begin with and then you're going to disappear so we're hiding and bringing our paw down over our face and rolling slowly up through our spine good we've then got our soft padasha through our feet padasha and then we're twisting to one side to feel our tail and you're just going to circle your wrist around your tail and bring that hand back into your lap and we repeat that all again but going the other way so we've got our big smile to begin with good and then you're hiding you're disappearing bringing your paw over your face and then we've got that part of sha through our feet and twisting our torso as we circle our wrist around our tail and bring our hands back in. So that was our first section and now we move on by pointing one leg forward so we're extending that leg straight out in front of us and we've got our four paws through our hands, good, and that comes in. And lifting up through our spine we've got a wash and a whoosh and then washing behind your ear and bring that paw down good and then we've got our big cat stretch so both our legs are, are reaching forward both our arms are reaching forward we're pushing our tummy button towards the back of the chair bringing our feet back into parallel as our arms come up to the ceiling and we're gonna have a big yawn good as your hands come down and then we're stretching out to one side with one arm and one leg, keeping that paw-like movement through our hands there. Nice. And we repeat that again on the other side, so the other foot is extending forward as we have our four paw movements that come in, bringing our feet back into parallel. And then we're washing our other hands here, one, and two, and then bringing that paw behind our ear and all the way back down to our lap. 
And then our big cat stretch, both arms, both legs are reaching forward, tummy button to the back of the spine, hands come up, feet in parallel, big yawn, as your hands come down, and then stretching your other arm and other leg up and out to the side, and bringing that back to parallel. Great. And to those of you that remember, we finished with that first section. So we've got our big Cheshire cat smile, and we're disappearing, so hiding to one side. Good, rolling up through your spine with a little pas de chat. Nice, and instead of feeling our tail, we finish here by bringing both our paws up over our face and curling over our legs to finish. And then you can slowly roll back up through your spine to find that lovely tall position once the music has finished. Okay, so I think we'll have a mark through with the music and I will talk through the movements as we do this mark through. So just to remember the rhythm and how it goes with the music that we're using. And then we'll do it a second time through and I will keep very quiet so you can just enjoy the movement and the music together without listening to my voice as well, okay? So let's do it once through now with me talking through, making sure we're sitting up nice and tall, feet in parallel position. Here we go. A big smile and height. Hard as shot and circle that tail. Other side and disappear. Hard as shot. Circle that tail. Good. Reaching one leg forward. Four, two, three, four. In. And we wash, wash, and in. Good. Both hands, both legs. Tummy button to the back of the spine. Reach out the yawn. And one arm, one leg stretch. Coming back. Using the other leg pointing forward. We've got four fours. okay for you and that you have started to remember the, the music with the movement there. So now I think it would be nice, as I said, to just have a go through without me speaking so you can just really get into the music and enjoy those big stretches and find your own way through it, okay? But as I did last week, I would really encourage you to just go to the ends of your limbs in all those moments that we've got our lovely stretch and even when we're curling through our tummy button, really making sure you're going to the end of that curve and the end of our smile, yes, so really making everything elongated and elegant, okay? Let's give this a go as our final, final go through of our Cheshire Cat exercise, okay? Off we go.
and rolling back up. Nice, okay, we will leave that one there now. So we've been learning the first two verses of our big Alice in Wonderland song challenge, which is a song sung at the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. And this week we're going to do the next couple of verses and these are sung by two other characters who are at the tea party. And the first one who sings is the Dormouse. The Dormouse is always snoozing, he's very sleepy, and he tells a sort of rambling, strange story uh, which features the letter M very heavily. He talks about drawing things beginning with the letter M, like mouse traps and the moon and memory and much of a muchness and then and then he gets a bit puzzled about how you might draw a muchness and so that's going to be the theme of our first verse sung by the dormouse so the dormouse has got to have a different sort of voice and he's a snuffly little snoozy character so we'll give him a snuffly little snoozy voice and his first line is, things that start with M for me. So we'll give him a little gesture as well of stroking his whiskers as he speaks. And so his first line is, things that start with M for me. Excellent. And we'll sing that to T for two. And so that first line goes, things that start with M for me, like mouse traps, moons and memory. So mouse traps, moon and memory. That line, like mouse traps, moon and memory. And then he starts to ponder about a muchness and sings, did you ever see a muchness? And before he can finish the word drawn, he goes into a massive yawn, which we will do as well. So let's do our pondering gesture and say, did you ever see a muchness drawn? Massive yawn. So can you sing that line with me? Did you ever see a muchness drawn? And did you ever see a muchness drawn? Okay. <laughs> it's a strange song, but then it's a strange book. So let's just do the Dormouse verse all the way through. And the Dormouse is going to start with things that start with M for me. And things that start with M for me, like mousetrap, like mousetrap, moon and memory. Did you ever see a muchness drawn? Okay, and the final few lines are going to be said by the Cheshire Cat. So let's channel our cat voice, which is a smiley voice and need a big Cheshire Cat smile as we say the cat's words. And let's just preface that with a bit of a purr. And this is um, a real warm-up technique that classical singers use. If you push that noise, that air, through with these muscles that we use with our rib cages, it gives you a very effective purring sound. So let's do a quick And... And the cat, who in Alice in Wonderland tells Alice, we're all mad here. I'm mad, you're mad. So this is the cat's final lines of the song. The cat is going to say, You are mad and so are we. You are mad and so are we. You can't help that. So take some tea. You can't help that. So take some tea. Then you'll see how happy we can be. 
Then you'll see how happy we can be. So our gestures for the cat's lines are going to be a little turn of the cat head with some cat ears for you are mad and so are we. And then a shrug, you can't help that. So take some tea. Then you'll see how happy we can be. And we do a big smiley gesture at the end. So the music for that is the last few lines of the song and the cat sings. You are mad and so are we. You can't help that, so take some tea. Then you'll see how happy we can be. Okay, so now all the way through the Dormouse and the Cat's verses, and we start with the Dormouse saying, things that start with M for me. So here we go, ready? And things that start with M for me, like mouse traps, moon and memory. Did you ever see a muchness drawn? You are mad and so are we. You can't help that, so take some tea. Then you'll see how happy we can be. And to finish, we'll just have the Queen of Hearts putting a stop to the whole thing and saying, off with their heads. Ready? And off with their heads. Thank you. In this exercise, we're going to go to the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. And uh, this week, we're going to learn um, the Mad Hatter part and then a bit of tea party movements. And then we're going to add on uh, the Dormouse uh, He's one of the guests uh, next week. So we'll start um, with the Mad Hatter. So sitting nice and tall, we're going to think about taking our hands to the hat and then we're going to do a big greeting. So we're going to lift our hat. So from that slightly twisting your torso position, you're going to reach and swing the hat down and bringing it back up onto our head. And then we're going to do this little sort of uh, curling our fingers to call the guests in and we're going to do that with the other hand. And we're going to take the hat again now the other side so the other arm in front holding our hat so we twist the other, other direction here lifting the hat and then we're going to come into our big greeting taking the hat back and then we're going to again do that little finger twirling calling the guests in to our party. Then we're going to open one leg to the side so you can come to the tip of your toes if that's okay. So we're going to open, place the heel down and we're going to open the other leg and place the heel down. We're going to take our hands in sort of like your uh, thumbs in your armpits and then we're going to lift the heels and lift the elbows and lower down. One heel lengthens out to the side and we're going to lean away from the leg place the foot back and we'll lift the heels and the elbows again, lower down to the other side, lengthen the other leg, heel on the ground and lengthen, lifting the elbows and the heels down. Good. So we started with our hat and our greeting and then calling and calling, taking that to the other side. So really like thinking about a big movement here as you reach with your hat, taking it back and call and call and we'll open and open, taking your hands in, arms in, we're going to lift and lower and then we're going to heel out and lifting and the other side and actually there is a no more heel rise here but then in the party so the clock always strikes six so it's always six o'clock so we're just going to take our feet in to strike the clock so we're going to go one two three clap so 
that's our clock strike. Good. Then the tea party section. So that's our Mad Hatter. So we're going to take that tea party section next. So we're going to do heel out, heel out, in, in. And with that, we're going to have the tray, tea trays serving on our hands. So we're going to go out and out and in and in. Now we're going to think about a huge big reach into a big teapot with the leg out and the arm out and we're going to take the elbow to the side. So really big movement here. We're going to take our hat and then we're going to take it forward and in. So like a little scoop movement with the hat and then we're going to pour the tea into the hat and we're going to do a little tilt with that and coming back and then we're going to put that hat with the tea on our head. So that's a big reach to the side. So really think about huge teapot here. Hat, scoop forward and up. Pour the tea with the tilt to the side and taking the hat into your head. Now, we're going to scoop uh, a bit of the cream on the top of the cupcake. Again, big movement and we're going to lick. We take the cherry from the top and open and drop. And then we're going to take another teapot from the other side. So whatever side you didn't do, like that big circle, the leg and the arm, elbow in. This time we're going to lean towards the teapot and like you would open your pocket and pour the tea in to the pocket and we finish with that one, two, three, clap the clock. So the T1 part is open, open with your trays back, back. Big teapot and we'll take the hat in and then we'll pour into the hat leaning and taking it in to our head. Scooping the cream and lick, taking the cherry and drop into your mouth. The other side, big teapot, opening your pocket, pouring in, and we'll go one, two, three, four, to finish that clock. That's all we're going to do today. So we're going to start with our Mad Hatter part, calling in, and then coming into that tea part section. So let's try that with some music that Nia's played for us. Here we go with the hat. in our guests hat the other way and forward and call and we'll take one leg side hands in in lift and up lifting elbows and heels the other side and we'll go one two three T and big teapot and hat scoop and pour hat on cream and cherry and the other side teapot one more time with the music. Here we go, hat and back up, call and the other way, hat and call. We're going to open and the other side, hands in, arms, elbows, heels, and one side, heel and centre lifting, elbows, heels. One, two, three, T. And big scoop to take the pot. Hat. And pour. Hat back on cream. Great, fantastic.
think we're going to leave it there for it today. So you're going to do a free foot exercise just to get the legs going. Um, so just follow me and we'll do this to some lovely music that Mia has play for us. Here we go. Stepping forward, 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 back. Again. Let's keep going. Forward. sure you feel comfortable here and then we're gonna come to the back of the chair now if you are at home watching the video um, recorded um, and you'd like to take a little break for some water if you feel like you need a drink so please feel free to just pause the video now is a good time to go and get your water bottle have a little drink and then uh, come back to the video uh, for our standing exercises we're going to do a caterpillar character themed uh, plie exercise. And we're just going to do this freestanding, but as always, if you feel like you want to stand and you would like to have your chair there for support, so please do that or a wall or anything you have if, you, if you'd like to use some support. I'm also going to show uh, the seated version, so there's going to be a little video on that. So we're going to start in a parallel position, hip width apart, toes pointing forward and just have a little softness in your knees so you can really feel your family on, on your feet. We're going to take one arm, it's like we're taking from somewhere, wherever you can reach towards the ear and it's going to come into a nice little side reach as we bend the knees coming into a plie and just uh, releasing the arms, like you're sweeping over your head and coming up. And then we'll take the other arm, and this is where you're gonna, like you take the, the pipe that <laughs> the caterpillar is smoking. So we're gonna take a plie and swing the arm up, and then we're gonna think about that pipe, and we're going to then bring it towards the mouth with another swingy plie and lower the arm. So there's a little bit of that swing sense with the arm and the leg there. So let's do that. We're gonna go towards the side, 
and then swinging forward and to the mouth and back. Then we're going to step one leg forward. So you, maybe if you, it's easy to think about that as the arm lowers down, then you can take that leg forward, just to remember. It doesn't matter, we'll do both sides. So we're gonna step forward, and then if you feel comfortable, you can lift the back heel up a little bit. So we're gonna come into a little lunge here, bending the knees, and then we'll do a little sort of ripple, <laughs> like caterpillar ripple arms here, and then come back. So you can get that lunge forward, push to the front leg to come back, okay? Then we'll take that to the second side. So we're gonna take the other arm, and if it's helpful to think about the leg that was in front, if you've been following me, we're gonna take that arm up to go to the second side, and then change arms to sweep up, to pipe, bring the pipe into your mouth, and back. Then that leg steps forward, so your arms just lower down, if that helps, into that lunge. I'm just going to turn that way so that it's easier to see. So you don't want to push too far over that knee, so trying to stay in your centre. And as much as you can, keeping that spine nice and tall, so it helps with the balance, strong legs, and then push through that leg to come back up. Good. Then we're going to have a little bend in the knees. I'm just going to turn side, slightly diagonal so it's easier to see, but we're going to keep facing the front. We're going to do a little, like a sort of Mexican wave, ripple through your body, thinking about that caterpillar movement, but it's easier if you keep a little bend and softness in your knees throughout. So we're going to do a, or like a wave sense through your body, two of those. So we're going to face forward as we do that. Two ripple movements. Then we'll think about uh, the segments in the, cat the caterpillar's body. So we're going to bring our arms in this sort of like a diamond shape here, and we're going to do one, two, three. So the movement quality changes from these soft ones into one, two, three. And we're going to bring the arms forward. So you can lengthen the legs slightly here, but throughout, just keep a little softness in the knees. It's easier for balance. And we're just going to think about the segments through the front body. So we're going to go a little ripple. So you can get your hands going there forward. Two go. Oh, sorry. So we'll go forward. And then we're going to take one arm and think about the hair. This is a hairy caterpillar. The hairs on the caterpillar is just going to feel that on, along the arm and then you can open across your, like you sweep across your chest with a little plie, slightly leaning away from the arm and coming back. Back into two ripples and then we're going to go diamond shape to go segment, segment, segment and then that ripple through the front body with a little curvy plie and then we feel the hair on the other arm swooping across your chest, coming up. So that's our basic plie section. Then we'll have a little swingy bit in the middle. And if you were there for that water exercise we did earlier, a week ago or a few weeks ago, so we have sort of a similar leg pattern here. So we're gonna swing forward and to the side and slightly backwards and to the side. Just thinking about that, that this leg stays in place. So that's your anchor point. You're just gonna feel a little bit directions, just getting that pattern going. So we shift the weight, but moving. And of course, if that doesn't feel comfortable, stay in your swing sideways. And then we're just gonna do a little caterpillar wavy arms you can go a bit freestyle there. We're going to do two rounds and then we'll come back into our parallel and we do, do little sort of caterpillar sideways wriggle, two rounds, and then we change sides. So now this leg is going to be my anchor and this leg is going to move. So I'm going to go diagonal forward, to the side, to the back, to the side. We'll go two rounds moving if you like or stay in that sideways 
swing. Coming back into your base parallel with a little bend in the knees, caterpillar wriggle, caterpillar wriggle. Then we'll come back into the beginning with our plies of sweeping across, swinging to the pipe. Ah, sorry. So sweeping across, swinging to the pipe, and with your forward step and the sort of wavy wriggle to the other side. And then we did our caterpillar waves, segment, 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 wave front brush the hair, wave, segment, 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 through the front and then feel the hair the other side and that's it. So let's try that with some nice music and thinking about that sort of slightly uh, smoky, dreamy, um, caterpillar, soft movement but there, there are those moments of slight angularity and as you go through this exercise. Here we go. Here we go with the music, side and sweep, pipe and back, step forward, wave and second side, side and swing pipe and stepping forward, Our caterpillar and wavy segment diamond and front body across your arm feel and back into wave second wave and diamond segments through front and feel the other arm Ready to go into our swings, here we go. to do our march again this week based on our Tweedledee and Tweedledum characters. So we looked at this last week and we put it to some music so we'll just recap the movement now before we put it to some music again this week and we're also going to add some arm movements on to one of our sections but we'll get to that whilst we're recapping the movement. So for this exercise, we're beginning in an easy first position. So just finding um, your feet slightly turned out, but you want somewhere that you feel stable um, and able to move from. So don't turn your feet out too much, just find somewhere that's comfortable for you with a slight turnout in your feet. And just remembering to pull up through our tummy. So imagining we've got that zip that we're doing up, up our tummy button to pull everything up feeling nice and grounded, shoulders pressing down into the floor, 
feet pressing down into the floor, lovely. And we're beginning with our hands down by our sides. And we've got a short introduction in the music where we're taking one hand up to the side, clenching our fist as it comes into one hip. And we do that with the other arm, clenching our fist into one hip. And as you do that movement, just following your hand with your focus there. So looking from side to side as your hands come in there. And we've then got our plie section. So let's just recap that now. We've got a plie and we stretch. Then we release one foot forward for a tondu. And as you do that, really pull up onto your standing leg so you can release that foot forward, really point that toe and draw that back into our first position. Then we plie again and stretch, pulling everything up. And then we've got that um, linking, imagining we're linking with our tweedle dee or tweedle dum, linking their arm by reaching for it and bringing your hand back to your hip. And we repeat that all using the other leg and other arm. So we've got a plie and stretch, pulling up on that standing leg to release the other leg forward, point and close. Plie and stretch link that arm and we do that once more through each side so we've got plie stretch tondu and in plie stretch link that arm last time stretch other foot point forwards plie stretch link that arm good from there we've got our fast marches with a tap a toe tap on our eighth count and we do that four times through so we've got four lots of eight marches with our toe tap and as we start marching our feet move into that parallel position so we've got one two three four five six seven tap one two three four five six seven tap same leg lifts after the tap five six seven tap last time five six seven tap and because that's quite fast you don't want to lift your leg up too high on those marches so you're just kind of letting your foot come off the floor peel off the floor there and we tap and when we're tapping we're tapping our toes on the floor so we can release that foot again to use it to start the march again so we've finished that section we've done four lots of eight quick marches on the spot and we finish with that tap we're then taking our slow pattern movement in the space with our feet. And this is where we're going to add on those arm movements I was talking about at the beginning. But let's recap what the feet are doing beforehand. So we're in parallel position, we just tapped with one foot. We're using that foot to take us forwards. Other foot comes forwards, then we retrace our steps back and back. Then we're going to the side, side together, side and tap. So we've still got that tap on the eighth step there. We then use that foot to go forwards, forwards, going back, back, and then we're traveling back the other way, side together. So we've ended up where we started. Let's put some arm movements onto that now. Now, if you prefer, you can keep your hands on your hips. That's absolutely fine. But if you'd like a little bit of a challenge as well, today then you can add these arm movements in too. So as we step forwards, our hand's going to come forwards with a clenched fist and we've got an angle still there in our elbow. So we're stepping forwards, other arm joins as we come forwards. As we go back, we're finding our hip again with our arm and back. To the side, we're going to press our elbow out to one side as we step. So we're stepping side. As we come together, our hand comes to our hip. Side again, and as we tap, hand to hip. And we repeat all of those arm movements going forwards, forwards, finding your hip, find your hip. Press together, press and tap. We then go back to our eight marches again. Four lots of eight marches with a tap on our eighth count. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, tap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, tap. Keep going. Three, four, five, six, seven, tap. Last lot of eight. Five, six, seven, tap. Back to our 
pattern moving through the space. So either keeping your hands on your hips or doing those arm movements we've just done. Stepping forwards, forwards, back, back, to the side, together, side, tap that foot, move that foot forwards, forwards, back, back, to the side, together, side, tap. Now once you've done that through, that's the second time we've come back to that motif, you're going to find that easy first position again and there's a bit of time in the music here for you to find that position and find that pull up through your tummy and we go back to our plie section to finish the exercise. So we've got plie, stretch, tendu and in, plie, stretch, link that arm. Again, other side, stretching the other foot forwards, plie, stretch, linking that arm all the way through again, both sides. Tendu, together, plie, stretch. Look at that arm last time, good. Really stretch in, plie, stretch, finishing with that link. Good, okay, just let any tension go in your arms there and give your legs a bit of an ease out. We are going to do that with some music again this week, okay? So just to remind you, if you'd rather keep your hands on your hips for that slow pattern step in the space, please do, that's absolutely fine, but you're more than welcome to do the arm movements with me too, okay? So let's just get ready to do that with some music now. Finding that first position, feeling nice and tall through your tummy button and let's just lift our shoulders up to our ears and exhale as you press them down your back, good, searching for the ground beneath you there, nice, hands are down by our sides and we're ready to go on our introduction by finding that hand and that hip, okay, off we go, getting ready with one arm up, and hip, other side. We've got plie, stretch, tendu, in, plie. Good, link that arm, other side, and tendu. Plie, stretch, link the arm, plie again. Other leg release, and in, plie. Link, again, plie, stretch. That's it, plie, and link. Eight marches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, tap, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, tap, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, tap, last time. Five, six, seven, tap, forwards, forwards to hips, good, to the side, together, side, tap, go forwards. Just one, two, three, five, six, seven, tap. Five, six, seven, tap. Keep going. Five, six, seven, tap. The last time. Five, six, seven, tap. Forward, forward, back, back to the side. Together, side, tap. Moving forwards, forwards, back, back. Lovely side. again and easing through the legs nice 
Okay, we're going to do another standing exercise this week, which has got a lot of swinging movements to it, so it should really kind of get the blood flowing, get the heart going um, in this exercise. And it is based on uh, the game of croquet that is played in the Queen's Gardens by all of her friends. And for those of you that know the story, you'll know that instead of croquet sticks to play croquet, they're using flamingos to hit the ball. So we're going to have a bit of a game of croquet in this exercise, thinking about having that flamingo that's hitting the ball instead of a regular croquet stick. We're beginning our feet are in parallel, our hands are down by our side, and we've got a bit of an introduction here. So you're taking one hand down and the other hand down to clasp that flamingo ready to play your game on the introduction. And then we're going to step forwards and forwards and from here you're going to bend your knees slightly and swing your stick and let it drop and then you're going to step backwards back back and do the same bend through your knees swing and come back down and we repeat that so we move forwards again we've got forwards forwards bending through our knees to swing and down last time we're going to go back and back swing bending and coming back down, okay? So just really find however much bend in your knees you want there. There's no kind of specific um, plie or squat exercise that we're doing there. It's just a simple bend through your knees to allow you to swing those arms up, okay? From there, you're going to take the flamingo in one hand and bring the other hand to your hip. And then we're going to come on to our back foot as we turn onto a diagonal and point that front foot forwards to take a swing on our diagonal pathway here. So we're going to start with two low swings, just kind of testing um, the swing here that we've got with our flamingo. So you're going to take two kind of gentle swings. And then we've got two much bigger swings with our arms here. Swing as you hit the ball. And we take two gentle swings again. Two. And then two big swings. Good. Nice. Let's just recap all of that from the beginning so we know where we're at. We've got our parallel position. One hand comes in front of us on the introduction. The other hand joins to hold our flamingo. We step, step, bend, swing and down backwards, bend, swing, down, going forwards, forwards, bend, swing, lovely, and back, back, bend, swing. Find that hip, hand comes back, ready to swing, small swings here, for two, and then we've got our bigger swings, for two, good, smaller swings, for two, and bigger swings, for two. Good. From there, your hand's going to come down and the other hand is going to come in front as though we've got our flamingo in one line in front of us. And your hands are kind of a tiny bit uh, wider than your shoulders, I suppose, here. And you're going to twist to come back to face the front. So we're going to travel on a horizontal line here instead of our diagonal. And you're just going to prepare for swinging again with our flamingo by bringing your hands to one side, transferring your weight onto that foot. And then we've got six very low swings here. So you're going to really bend through your knees for six swings. Five and six. And then on seven, eight, just come up through your legs a little bit. Seven, eight. We've then got four much bigger swings. Your hands are flying to the ceiling. We've got one, two, three, four. And then we're going to swing five, circle, six, Come back seven and hands come together, feet in parallel eight. Okay, let's recap all of that section. We've just finished with our big high swing, hands above our head on our diagonal there. Your hand comes down, other hand joins, we come onto that leg and we're now on a horizontal line. We're swinging low. Two, three, four, five, six, stretch those legs a bit, seven, eight, swinging high, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Okay, so that circle, we've got five, it circles above our head and we transfer our weight onto our other leg as our hands come down to that side, but we come back onto that first leg as our hands come back to where they started and then close everything together, clasping our hands, feet in parallel. Okay, we repeat that whole thing again. So we are stepping forwards and forwards, bend, swing, and back, good, back, back, bend, swing, arms come down, going forwards, forwards, bend, swing, last time, back, back, bend, swing, arms come down. Now this hand comes to the hip this time as we transfer our weight back to that diagonal line and our back hand is ready to swing, we've got our two smaller swings, forwards, one, and two, and then much higher swings for two. Back to those smaller swings for two. And much higher for two. Good. And then we're bringing our hands into that horizontal um, pathway. Our feet come back to parallel. We're facing centre now, ready to go for our low swings in front of us. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, coming up, seven, eight. Now big swings for four, two, three, four. On five, our arms circle, six, seven, close, eight. So that is the whole exercise there. And there is quite a lot of energy that this exercise requires, as I'm sure you can see from just going through those steps. If you'd like to be seated for this, that's completely fine. Please do um, find a seat. There will be a seated variation on the screen when we do this with the music. So that's an option for you if you'd like to do that today. Otherwise, just getting ready, let's try and put this to some music this week. So feeling nice and tall through your spine, feet are in parallel, hands are down by our sides. And just remembering that during that introduction, we're bringing one hand down and the other hand to meet it, ready to step forwards with our bend swing of our flamingo. Okay, off we go. One hand coming down, another hand to meet. Stepping forwards, step, step, bend swing. Lovely, back, back, bend swing. Again, forwards, forwards, bend swing. And back. One hand to hip, other hand back and swing. Two low swings and higher, higher. Back to our lower swings and higher. Good, higher. Swing those arms. Here go one, two, three, five, six. Coming up, seven, eight. Big swings. One, two, three. required for that so good job for getting through that swinging exercise we're going to revisit that next week so we will get another go at all of that but we'll leave it there for now we are going to come back down to seated now for our cool down this week so just finding a chair and um, perhaps it's over to the side and bringing it into the space and when you've got that just coming in front of it and finding the backs of your legs on the back of the chair there, pressing your bottom towards the back as you lower yourself down, and then just having a bit of a rock forwards to find that lovely position that we have with our 
back away from the back of the chair, pulling up nice and tall through the spine, feet in parallel, ready to cool down. Just gonna do a little cool down uh, to some music, follow me. So arms to the side. Let's start like with a, with a warm up, rolling the shoulders slowly. And again. And once more here. It's going to let the spine round, curve through your spine. And think like you're, something's pulling from the mid back towards the chair, rolling up and then opening your chest. Like you have that lovely sunshine shining on the chest, and lengthening up. Good. Just lengthen one leg forward, flexing the foot, like you pull the toes towards you. We're going to reach the opposite arm forward and the other arm back, coming into a little twist, reach like we did it with our Alice exercise, and then release. Taking that to the other side, lengthen, flexing the foot, then reaching the opposite arm forward and the other arm back. Put that length through your midline, and release. Good. Lengthening the arms to the side. We're going to open one leg again from our Alice movement, coming into a gentle sway twist here. Just going slowly, opening the arms, closing the leg. Gonna open the other side and coming into that gentle spiral to the other side and coming up, easing the arms. Scooping up one arm, <clears throat> again like you paint that rainbow over your head. And coming back. Release the arm. Let's take it the other way. Reaching up and over. And coming back. And release. Good. Just going to take one arm up. Now just going to bend the elbow, touch your any way you can uh, on the back of the shoulder there on neck. And reaching with the other arm so you can get a nice length stretch through the arm there. Okay, we're going to open that other elbow to the side. And releasing down. Taking the other hand, walking the fingers where work for you. You can use the other arm to lengthen. Or open the elbow to the side to get that nice stretch on the back of the arm. And releasing down. Good. Sweeping the arms up. And then we're going to open them to the side. Again, sweeping forward. And big opening to the side. One more time in forward. Opening. And this time we're just going to give ourselves a big cuddle, sweeping one arm across and the other, like you give yourself a hug. Let's do a little twist here with a hugging position. Finding your center and one big opening with the arms to the side. And lowering down. Good. And just take a nice deep breath in. And exhale out. Very good. Lovely. Thank you for joining us again this week. We'll hope to see you again next time.